Hello everyone. Welcome to NPTEL course on groundwater hydrology and management. This is week nine, lecture five. In this week, we have been looking at the most important method of understanding how many layers are there under the ground so that we can construct an aquifer system called aquifer stratification. The number of layers can be averaged or assumed which is dominant and thereby reducing the number of layers for an active understanding of groundwater management. We looked at the different methods in the last class to connect lithologs, which is basically taking a sample out of the ground and connecting them by hand to look at what are the layers. We also looked at softwares that can do this work. Now we have come to the important part of collecting data for your groundwater balance. Let's start with the groundwater exploration, which is the basic of the groundwater estimation. So in today's lecture, I hope uh, last time um, everyone had a chance to look at this website because I gave them the link and showed you how to go and access the different aspects. Now I'll show you a live demo of what all things we will be covering. So in today's lecture, we will be covering the groundwater exploration and you have aquifer mapping and exploration details lithologs. So basically you will click the WRIS website, go to groundwater and then you have multiple parameters to choose. Uh, since lithologue is an exploration, you will go to the exploration part and then when you click it goes to the exploration link. The water level behavior is actually the water level data. Okay. And then the others are where groundwater recharge activities have been built uh, and more prospect studies, potential groundwater recharge uh, areas, uh, and then resource estimations. I would like you to do these because uh, now you have the real data. What you see here in the water level data would be in the, at least in the 2020, 2021 year, whereas the prospects are kind of 10 years old, right? So you could actually go to these uh, level data and other data, and then you do the methodology that we learned in class to understand the groundwater head, contour maps, and then which side the water is flowing, all those things. We can also look at groundwater quality, which is not uh, a very important part of uh, this particular course, but it is important to understand that without groundwater quality, quantity is not to be sold separately. It has to go together. Okay. So let me start with the groundwater exploration part, a live demo so that you can see how this is being done. Okay. I'm going to share my screen. Yeah, so I hope you can see my um, Google page, okay, where you're going to search how uh, to get the data for groundwater in India. Again, I'm only focusing on groundwater in India, and mostly we'll be looking at uh, rural regions, but this data will get from everywhere. So it's not only going to be rural regions, all the data will be available. So let's type WRIS. What does WRIS um, indicate? It is water resource information system. You can type the whole thing or just type WRIS. If needed, you can put India on in front. India WRIS. Okay. This government website would come. It might be different for others because you are using WRIS for RIST or other Google search. So it's better to also type the whole name, which I'll do now. W, what India, water resources information system. Click enter. Click 
enter, you will get this, okay? The first web page. So I'm doing it again so that you can understand. I'll just start with WRIS, click enter. Your India WRIS website will come, okay? The best part is just click India and WRIS. And the first web page is your India Water Resource Information System. Click it, it will open in another tab depending on your browser. But you will see a page like this. Kindly be updated. This page um, and the how it works would always get changed because there's always updation. A softwares are coming, you have a better infrastructure for IT. So this page won't look like the same for next two, three years, but the WRIS is going to remain. Okay, you can see the logo. India WRIS like a water drop and within the water drop is India's uh, match. You can go and learn about uh, who's running WRIS, what it means in the about section. Home is coming back to the first page on all these uh, different links, data, all these things. Okay. There's actually an advanced level of this course where you can uh, quickly look at this data and bring it to GIS. We won't cover that. Again, we will look at what are the important data, where are the artificial structures, so that you can now go to those locations and find it in the map. The whole point here is groundwater is depleting both quantity and quality. Look at how bad uh, the water situation is. So it is important to have all these in a uh, one website where you can download the data and construct your water balance. And it's not just for groundwater, as the name suggests, it's for all the water, okay? So this is the water data link that you would click. If you go on each tab, it will elongate based on if it has data or not. There is a WRIS tool, online web editor, artificial structure editor, entry where you can enter where you have created a groundwater, um, you know, check dam or a uh, recharge pond, recharge infiltration pond, etc. In the utilities, you have data, geo viewer, uh, reports, etc., and publications are there. Okay, so we will not go into all these because we will only look at the data. But you can also get, as I am saying, there's much much more that you can collect. Okay, so groundwater reports are good in terms of uh, the studies and yearbooks. If you look at the yearbook. They have yearbooks from 2009. I showed you the last one was 2018, 19. Uh, you have 19, 20, 19, 20 also. I'll show you how to search that also in this lecture. Okay, so let's come back to the water data, which we wanted to look. Surface water includes your storage, river, snow, glacial, etc. Again, this is for the entire water balance. If you want to create, you can do that. Uh, your land resources are your land cover type. What uh, is it forest, how much forest, those kind of data is available. Uh, your hydrometrological would include your rainfall, evapotranspiration, soil moisture, and agroclimatic zones. Then there are light themes, storm, flood inundation, pretty outdated in some uh, reports, but they keep, as I said, they're always constantly updating. And then there is projects, water projects, into basin transfer, irrigation sensors, etc. Let's go back to groundwater. In the groundwater, the first one we would click is the groundwater exploration. See, I'm not clicking here. There's no click button. I'm clicking, it doesn't work. Once you come here, it automatically highlights and opens the groundwater all data, okay? So just move your pointer. I hope you could see my pointer. Let me see if I could put a spotlight. Yeah, so I put water data, I put groundwater, and then I just move. I just bring my mouse to the right, groundwater exploration happens. Do you want aquifer 2D or lithologs? Since we are going to look at lithologs, you just come down and then click the lithologs. So this is the first data, it just automatically pulls up. Belma, location 71, um, ID, and then uh, in Madhya Pradesh, BID. You can search an address here, okay? 
let's search. I put Tane and Tane Maharashtra comes up. I click Tane Maharashtra. The map will automatically shift to Tane Maharashtra. Okay. The distance between these tabs depends on your browser. You can always change it. So if you see the dotted lines, you can see the dotted lines. Go to the dotted line and you can pull or push the slider. So how many windows are here? There's one window, two window, three window, and four windows. Okay. When you automatically come to Litholog, already a Litholog will be populated. So don't worry about it. You will have four windows and some um, data like here, what it means, etc. Okay. Yes. Now, I would just slowly move this. The first uh, window here on the right is your guide or your uh, documentation on how to use this, etc. You can just click this you can download as a PDF. For now, since we need more to show you, I'm going to minimize this. So you see, I am minimizing it. Then you can push this uh, also to the side because I want you to show you the map and this data can remain, okay? So the search result has brought me to Tane here and you can go in or out of Tane. So plus is zooming in and then minus is zooming out. Once you go in further, you will see more of these wells coming up if they are there. What it says here is you have to click on the map to get the lithology details. So if it is not here, let's go back to your Madhya Pradesh. Okay, so I'm going to go back. And your layer list would show you all the lithology well. So it's, you see here, it is still loading. And that is why you don't see any wells here of what the lithology is, okay? So it is still loading, let it load. And here you have the basin boundary. We don't have the basin boundary. You can have the administrative boundary, okay? If you click on the arrow mark down, there's more boundaries, okay? I don't want state boundary. I don't want the state boundary. You can click the eye, the eye, uh, like there's a line on the cross of the eye. You don't see the district. For example, I'm going to close this. Now you can see all these uh, major things are gone, okay? Only the small names remain. Okay, so I've opened it. Now the Maharashtra has come, you can see. And then you can um, click on the little logs if you want to see and your basin boundary is CWC. So I'm going to go back out and you can see now it's, it's again started to uh, move. Okay. Here, let's go to near Nasik. So you can click and pull, okay? So I'm zooming into Nasik. And you can see that the little log well locations are picking up. Let it pick up and then I will go to one location and click. As it says, please click on the map it says. Now I click and it starts to blink, blue color. So once the blinking stops, you can see that this will get populated. And this is still running. You can see that the black line is running. So we need to give it some time for it to run and then you can look at it. So once the data comes, you can print it as just a normal print and take notes of it, or you can download it uh, as a CSV or PDF. In the layer list, you also have other layers if you need. The base gallery is nothing but what type of background you want. So these are all mostly GIS stuff you want a dry background, imagery with labels, etc. If you have a slow network internet, use this one, streets, okay? If you use imagery with labels, then that is itself an image. So it will take a lot of internet uh, and it will slow down. So make sure you understand that and take only what you want. Like in terms of, if you can understand this is Maharashtra and Nasik, 
that's enough right so you don't need much more than that okay this is the called a legend basically it tells what type of well as i showed you in the last class the red color means it's an exploratory well the well we clicked is a exploratory well so that is why it is red in color you can close this or move it to the side i've moved it to the side so that we can see the image looks like it is not pulling up right the litho litho log is not coming up maybe it doesn't have uh, it for that area so i'm going to put back the bind uh, area in madhya pradesh so there's a lot of uh, logs it's populating and once it comes you can get it here okay and sometimes if the data is not there it just goes on and on so don't uh, waste your time and sit there it will come it won't come so i'm going to do that again so i'm going to go to storage to stop it you know i'm just going to go here just coming back i'm going to click I'm going to click again. See how slow is not the internet slow. Sometimes the web page, if it is too much data, it does take slow. So I'm going to ground exploration, exploration details with the logs, and it comes up again. Okay, so I'll just refresh the page, it's coming up. So uh, in the bin, you could see that this is the default, so you can see it. Okay. As I said, I will move the right panel closely so that I can move this one more. And you can see all the logs, okay? And I'm going to put down this um, well also because I don't want to see this legend. I know that this is uh, uh, what it is, right? So I know all these things. So the cool thing here is you can see it is a mixture of wells. It is other wells, someone else's well. It, we don't know, maybe it's a dug well used for farming. Uh, and then you have exploratory wells in red color. The blue wells are observation wells. There's no observation here, here but there is a piezometer. So piezometer is also for observation. So you can click it and it can pick it up, but we are here to look at litholog. So let's click one litholog. Okay, and it populates at once. So as I said, it may be an internet issue or mostly the data is not there. So it just goes on and on and on. So wait for a good time, like one minute, two minutes, uh, depending on your internet. Uh, and if other logs are opening faster, just go back and, and, and fix it, okay? So what it gives you is some data, the well ID, which state, basin, basin, the Ganges basin, what type of well it is, it's, it's an exploratory well, which is just for little logs, okay? Uh, year of observation is 2004, they dug the well in 2004. Uh, and then distance of observation wells, um, and you have year of drilling. Year of drilling would be the year of observation, for example. Uh, depth drilled is 80 meters. They went 80 meters below the ground level, and you could see that 80 meters is there. Okay, depth of bedrock not in A because they didn't do anything. So coming back, you could go here and look at the same well with all these locations. Now let's look at a different well nearby just to see. See, I've clicked it. It is saying, just wait for it. It, will, it is coming up. And as I said, if it doesn't come up at once, maybe there is no well there, data there. So I'm moving. Yes. I clicked another one. Now you can see it's Amitpura 006, Madhya Pradesh district bill. So don't waste too much time on it, but um, some parameters are given. Look at this one. Transmissivity is given, storage coefficient is given. These were not available in the previous log. So depending on the log and which year they took it, there will be some more data. You have electrical conductivity, uh, water quality is there, uh, what type of material, et cetera. Okay, good. So um, I'm going to zoom out just to show you how many wells are there, how many blue wells are there for observation, et cetera. And all the observation wells mostly will have some data in it, okay? 
So it's not that they won't have data, but they will have some data in it. Okay. So now if I'm happy with this data, this is what I want. I will click on this, view full screen, download CSV, et cetera. Okay, so let's say I'm going to download as an image. I want to use it as an image. So I'll click this. It will ask me, who are you, why you want to use this, or you can just go straight into my desktop. So I'm putting it into my library and I'll open it just to show you. Okay, it is open. I'll just show you how it looks like. So it looks like the same as has come and you have your uh, depth, uh, your uh, ID and district, all those stuff, okay? So let's come back to the initial one. Good. Now what we're going to do is, we are going to see if there is enough data, other data that we need for this little log. See, you have, you need a location to put on a map. How do you get that location? By having your XY location, okay? So the, the lat long would be given here, uh, for example. So if it might be given here sometimes or in this data by the well ID. If it is not given, it's fine. Just click. So you can click on that well, and this gives you your lat long. You can see here, the lat long is given here. So if I move my pointer to that blue point, you can get your lat long, which is X, Y in the degrees. You can also change it to different units, UTM, for example, 44 R, you can change it to DMS, okay? Or a normal base map. So however you would like it, you could change it um, and take it as a location in your GIS, mod flow, any other model. Because the model needs which location are you putting this well? And this is where the location is given, okay? If you don't want this log, as I said, you can move it to the side. You can, you can take different boundary basins and other things which are necessary. Uh, and you can print this also as a page. In the layerless base mapper also, you can have, for example, I can have an imagery coming behind to show where on the land it is. Is it on the high slope, low slope, those kind of things. Good. So I've shown you how to look at lithologs. What is a lithologue? I've shown you how to uh, generate a litholog data. Uh, and to finish off today, I'll also show you what is active for 2D mapping which is a very um, prestigious project by the Indian government to map all the aquifers in 2D, which is in XY plane, not a depth, but at least in the 2D. Okay, this is a very informative uh, data. And you could see that um, you have the principal aquifers, which is the dominant aquifers, alluvium, laterite, et cetera. So we've used this image also in class, you would have noticed. But what is important is you can zoom in. You can zoom in. Um, and then you can click uh, on what layers you want to see, okay? For example, I can close all the other things just for the bandwidth. And I can show the aquifer system principle aquifer or not, but also I can show you the aquifer depth. So this is the how deep the aquifer is in these locations, okay? You can click here to show the depth, which means in uh, Haryana, we are in Haryana, Oh, no, this is um, not Haryana, but they've labeled it as Haryana, which is fine. It's always the same color, okay? So the color is same. Um, so sometimes this issue happens. They will pick a color and other things and they'll use it for one location, but it is actually for all of India. So you can see that blue color means below 25 meters. Uh, so what is very concerning? The red color. So let's go back out and see if it populates for the entire country. Might take some time. Yeah, so it's only three, four states or some states they have. Let, let us look for Tamil Nadu they have. So let me close other things just for the bandwidth. 
and go to Tamil Nadu to see if it populates. Okay, and you can see that this is the legend. It says uh, greater than one fifty is um, red. Okay, so you can also get the legend from here on the side. So which other states uh, can we see? Let me see if we could, uh, yeah, so it's coming now. So you see Tamil Nadu has come up uh, and what you see is Tamil Nadu's color is given by not this legend, but here, come down, you'll get it here. It is less than 40, is shallow. Always look at, is the, is the legend correct, okay? So Tamil Nadu is given as less than 40, uh, shallow, greater than, uh, um, uh, 150 meters is red. So you have a lot of pockets here. And for example, in Chennai, it's okay, but Pondicherry is kind of a very, uh, you know, developing city and other locations. You have good groundwater depletion. So this is how you could actually look at how deep uh, the water level is uh, by a static map. Okay. So with this, uh, I will go back to our uh, slide. Here we are, um, we have uh, finished the groundwater exploration I've shown you. Uh, in the next uh, class, I will show you about groundwater levels, water levels, that will be a class by its own. So I'll take one or two lectures on that, how to look at the data, how to download the data, and then use it for your uh, system, okay? So uh, with this, I'll do a recap before we finish off. Uh, in this week, we looked at uh, aquifer stratification where boreholes are dug, uh, how they're dug, we looked at. And then we looked at bore logs and litho logs. Then we looked at fence diagrams being constructed using the bore logs and litho logs. We looked at groundwater data, national CGD, WB, um, and GEM system. We discussed that and said that state and PWD are available. We looked at the WRIS data set, at least one for litho logs. With this, I would um, sign off this uh, week's lecture. I will see you next week where we'll dig more on the CGWB and other data. And then we'll construct a conceptual model. What is a conceptual model? I'll see you in the next class. Thank you.